Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maya Roy and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And this is Armela. I don't think I know how to pronounce your last name. It's Gilsheni. Yes, whatever <laughs> she said. Don't ask me to spell it or repeat that. But I, I didn't remember your name. I'm, I'm getting your name correctly. I got, it, I got it really bad at the beginning. And Armela is the community manager, well, the intern community manager here at Four Leaf Clover where I live. And I thought it would be fun to have her in one of my videos. In today's video, because it's Wednesday, it's a product review day, and if you've been following in the last few days, then you know it's a jigsaw puzzle from, well, I'm gonna keep the suspension on a little bit more, <laughs> unless you've obviously been in our group and then you know which is the supplier that I ordered this from. I did have one other jigsaw puzzle print on demand product review Earlier this year, I think it was actually filmed during the month of April when I was still in Israel with my dad and then reshot it like I did the final thoughts about it and the editing and upload when I was here in May. And I will leave a link to that video down below so you can go ahead and check it out. But I wanna dive deeper into this puzzle that came in like this. We are in Bulgaria, which is European Union, but the package came from the United States, which always pisses me off. I mean, I mean, this is a very big print on demand company. Why don't you make these things in the EU? I mean, it really would reduce shipping costs. So this puzzle is a 252 piece puzzle. I'm sorry for looking at this way because that's where my computer is. And it costs $16.04 to produce and $8.99 to ship, which is not a lot in the print on demand industry from shipping from the US to Bulgaria, even though I had to pay customs for it. But for a staggering amount of $26.73 paid on August 7th, made on August 10th, and delivered here on September 14th. So I got this cute thing here, wrapped in whatever that is, from Printify. And it is kind of cool. It doesn't have really a name on it. Obviously, I didn't really have a name over the product of the puzzle. I just made it to order for it myself. It says 11 by 14 puzzle. It has 252 pieces, age 9 plus, and a barcode and the photo here on top. Now let's look inside. I feel like such a child. No, I, need to do I don't know if you guys remember, but the video with my dad, we were like spending like, a f like 15 minutes to open a sticker. It doesn't have an extra page or something. What do you think about the box? It's cool. It doesn't have any logo on it or anything, which is also okay. And the back of the pieces is actually black. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I thought so too. The thing is that bothered me is usually when you buy a puzzle, the puzzle pieces inside come in some sort of a packaging. Like they would either, either mm -hmm. have like a nylon. And I don't know if you guys remembered right from this new, from the Chinese supplier that actually came with a really, really fancy like silk bag thing that I actually reused. And if you can see this here, there's also a lot of puzzle leftovers <laughs> around here. That's not very good. Yeah, it's not very, very good. So the reason why I had Armela here today is because I want to do like to show like the conclusion of this puzzle and for that we actually need to finish the puzzle and I was too lazy to do it myself. So let's move on to my living room where me and Armela are gonna make this awesome 252 puzzle of a design that we will talk about later <laughs> while you guys listen to awesome music and watch us in time lapse.
Okay, so we just finished the puzzle. And you can <sighs> see my very dirty kitchen behind Armela. So, it took us a long time, first of all. And the second, if you closely see... Let's focus on this. Look at this. Yep. Here it's not fully... Yeah, it's not the same. We also mentioned like we have the three dots here. And then in this photo, only one dot. And also at the bottom... Over here, the zigzags. You cannot see them at all here in the which reference made it picture. very difficult, which is the excuse that we're going with with why it took us about an hour to do this puzzle. Not because we're stupid. Not because we're not gifted. We are very talented, strong, independent women who failed, almost failed, a 250 piece <laughs> puzzle. Imagine a thousand. Yeah. And uh, I was cursing the designer the entire time. And then Armel uh, reminded me that that's me. So, yeah. This is the puzzle. Oh, it's actually quite funny because, you know, while we're doing the puzzle, the sun came out <laughs> and it's actually a beautiful day here. The cows were here until this, like, an hour ago. But, yeah, we are done with the puzzle. Let's get back to us and summarize the experience of making this puzzle in my very, very dirty apartment. And we're back to us. This took a lot of time. Overall, what do you think about the quality of the puzzles, like the pieces of it or the design? It was, um, okay, it was fun to make, but the quality, I don't think it was the best. You don't have to whisper when you say that because it wasn't the best. You don't have to feel sorry. I didn't make it. I only made the design. The design was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> actually, the design is kind of interesting because the design was actually made from coloring page elements, owls, from Creative Fabrica that I took each and every one of them and I colored them inside digitally differently and then placed them all on Canva and sort of created like one yeah. on top of each other. I also have it as an actual seamless pattern for Redbubble, but for this different, for this specific one, it wasn't a seamless pattern. And it's really difficult to make because, you know, once you think, oh, this is a green owl, you have no idea what kind of size it is, where it is in the puzzle. So it was kind of difficult to make. But it was fun. A difficult design was fun to make. If I think it was, it was an easy design. It was just difficult for us because we haven't been doing puzzles in a while. I'm, I'm, I'm so into like online puzzles that whenever that I put like, puzzles here, you, you can't hear that like click that tells you that it's in the right place. And it can also move apart, which is ridiculous <laughs> for someone coming. And you know what the thing is from when you're coming from online jigsaw puzzles, the corner fits in that corner. Like if, if you have a piece of puzzle and the straight line is here, then it goes here. You can't just twist it around. This is, I, I have no idea how people do actual puzzles. This is so frustrating. So frustrating. In any case, Printify is not the only company that does print on demand puzzles. And of course, if you want to work with Printify, they do not have a marketplace. So you'll have to integrate it with your own Etsy store, Shopify store, WooCommerce. They integrate with pretty much everyone. And the prices are kind of nice. I mean, they don't have really big puzzles like this new. They don't have a thousand piece puzzles. They like they have the 500 piece. And I know a lot of people tell me like, hey, May, you know, I Google Printify 1000 piece jigsaw puzzle and I found it. Yeah, go ahead. Google that. See if you can order it. It's from a very old landing page and the thousand piece puzzle is currently, to this day, is not available on Printify. So you have, I think was a hundred and something, 110, 252 and 500 piece puzzles. I also have another jigsaw puzzle coming my way from Final Works. Hands up if you ever heard about this print and demand supplier, because I know a lot of people have not. Yeah, I'm gonna like do it. <laughs> I always feel like a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> so I have another jigsaw puzzle coming from Final Works. You're gonna see it on the screen right now instead of Armella's head, which I think it was 110 pieces as well as two more pieces of art coming my way. Well, one of them came and I paid so much. I paid like 57 lev, 57 lev. for customs and I thought it was for the whole shipping of Final Works. By the way, 57 lev is 27 and a half euro yep. for customs for an order from Final Works. That's a lot. And the thing is that I ordered two posters, like a poster, a canvas, and a piece of puzzle. And they said, like, a final works. Hey, your order was shipped. And then I got a phone call from UPS, like from customs, and saying, you know, I have to pay 57 11 I was like, you know what, fine. And then the minute I paid it, a day after, they were like, getting, I was getting these emails from final works. The rest of your order was shipped. So technically, I paid 27 and a half euros or 28 and a half euros for one poster taxes. 
It's really hard doing a print on demand YouTube channel when you're in Bulgaria. I'm gonna try and find more European vendors. Even though Finer Works quality, and I'm giving you guys a heads up, is one of the best that I have seen so far in the print on demand industry. As I said before, regarding this cute design, I keep thinking it's reversed. No, <laughs> this cute design you can find on Creative Fabrica by just going into the link down below and finding these cute owls that you can color for yourselves. If you guys remember my llama pillow, it was also made by a coloring page, like a coloring element, of course, for print on demand use that I colored myself and put it on a background. And if you want me to make another tutorial again about how to use print on demand approved coloring pages from Creative Fabrica to design print on demand products by coloring them, please let me know in the comment section down below. I will be seeing you guys again tomorrow with a tutorial on how to make seamless patterns for Redbubble or for out of wear or for any other platform that allows you the tiling or the basically multiplication effect using Procreate. It's going to be the first Procreate tutorial in this channel. And Almela actually saw me making a seamless pattern on Procreate. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Do you think you, you will be able to do that yourself? I mean, yeah. We will see. We will <laughs> see if uh, the tutorial of tomorrow will be for Almela, which by the way gets private. <laughs> tutorials here and you'll probably hear from her later on in the next few months and so that's going to be tomorrow procreate make seamless patterns tutorial for redbubble or for pretty much anything else also if you want to sell them as digital paper packs you know seamless patterns for other people so that's going to be tomorrow and on friday i'll be seeing you guys of course for shop review videos and i'm not going to tell you which kind of shop i'm going to choose so go ahead and submit those shops to me there is a link down below in the description to a google form where you can go in and anonymously submit your shops those could be Redbubble society 6 etsy t-chip t public teespring printify with shopify and pretty much wherever it is that you're selling your print on demand or printable items and i know that friday is supposed to be the last day of the week and saturdays and sundays are used to be off uh, but I might see you again on Saturday and Sunday. I can't promise you that. There is a really, really cool print on a man marketplace that has a cool tool to find if someone is ripping off your work. And I might be making a video on that on Saturday. So stay tuned. Plus a video on Sunday with like some new product alerts that might be interesting to you guys. And of course, seeing you guys again on Monday. 7 p.m. Bulgaria time with a live premiere and a live chat talking about what I have done in the past few weeks on my own Etsy store and Payhip store because I'm starting to use Payhip a lot more and Armela is looking at me like, what is Payhip? <laughs> By the way, if you liked this video and found the content useful, hit that like button down below. Because every time you do, it really does help my channel and subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. And with that being said, that was it from us for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and as usual, I'll see you guys tomorrow in my next video. Bye! <laughs> Yes. Under oh, it's connected somewhere here. Maybe. No. Wishful thinking, babe. <laughs> it's getting there, Mama. Need mm -hmm. one more. Uh, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, one more. I know. And then you know the rest of the puzzle. <laughs> the rest. Where is your nose? <laughs> the forehead of this green one on top of this. So it's here, here, here. What am I supposed to do with it then? <laughs> Keep it. It doesn't connect to anything. I'm keeping a lot of things here. <laughs> I'm not a hotel lobby. <laughs> I'm not going to reserve things for you. The eye of the owl. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. The eye of the owl. Bum, bum, bum. No, it doesn't go there. No, I'm just finding the colors first because I need to. The colors exist in so many other places in this puzzle. The eye of the owl. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> <laughs> we lost our minds. That's it. Up to this point. That, that would be the day that broke me. <laughs> Not the PTSD, not the spinal hernias. Oh, you can't curse. Oh, you're you're gonna put this. Okay, I wanted to. You can this. do a peep. Don't worry, I'll put a peep. <laughs> put a this peep. will be my first video with a peep. Do you know? Oh, okay. Then we're we're racing. No, let's peep. Let's, let's peep. peep. I need to learn how to make a peep. I have no idea how to make a peep on the on the editing. I'll make a peep though. I'll figure it out because you want to curse. So I'll make it. <laughs> the eye of the owl.